Hello everyone. In this screencast, we're talking about Dask's adaptive scaling. Adaptive scaling is a clever way to have Dask automatically control how large your Dask cluster gets based on your current load. Here we have a Kubernetes cluster. So we're attaching Dask to Kubernetes and we can manually scale Dask up to say five workers or down either using this Jupyter widget interface or using the scale command in Python. We see that we've asked for five workers and a few seconds later they appeared. We see those five workers here. We might do some work with those five workers. Maybe we're analyzing some data set, producing some plots. And then once we're done with them, we may be cost conscious and scale that cluster down. Now we're get moving three, asking for only two to stick around. In this way, we're able to control our costs while scaling up when necessary, but back down when we're not using things. As I said before, we can do that same operation with the scale method of any Dask cluster class. This is the same on Kubernetes, on Yarn, on HPC job schedulers, etc. However, we may not trust ourselves to scale up and down regularly. We may accidentally leave the cluster up for a long time when we're not really doing anything. To handle this, we can use Dask's adaptive scaling. In adaptive scaling, we specify a minimum and maximum number of workers and we allow Dask to make a decision about how many workers it should ask Kubernetes or any other resource manager for. In this case, it's thought that we're not actually using the cluster currently. So we went down to our minimum number of one Dask worker. We can change that by doing some work. So let's use Dask array to create a large random array and then sum it along some axis, producing a relatively small result. As I submit work with this persist call, You'll notice here in the upper left, you'll notice that the number of workers asked for will increase, probably to our maximum, because there's a lot of work to do here. A few seconds later, you'll notice that Kubernetes will give us many more Dask workers here on the upper right. So watch those two areas as I run this cell. So our one worker is go ahead and processing. Now we're getting many more workers from Kubernetes, and we've got many more workers doing work for us. And our progress bar has moved to the right much more quickly, which is very satisfying. However, now that we're done with our work, Dask can scale down our workload to a single worker. So it, we have a relatively small result here. It's only a few hundred megabytes of RAM. So we can move all of that to one machine and then reclaim all of our other Dask workers for other workloads, either other Dask workloads or other things that Kubernetes might be doing, or if we're on the cloud, just reduce our costs. So again, adaptive scaling allowed us to stay at a baseline one worker, jump up very quickly to 30, and then automatically go back down to one, all without manual intervention. In these two cells, we never had to manually tell DAS to scale up and down. It figured out that on its own. Again, adaptive scaling can be very useful when we want to be very responsive and get a lot of machines when we need them, but also control our costs and re remove those machines when we don't. Here we use mostly the IPython widget interface to controlling Dask clusters, but we can also use the scale command uh, for manual control. We might use this if we're not in a notebook or if we just prefer writing Python rather than clicking buttons. Or we can also use the adapt method, providing a minimum and maximum number of workers. That's it. Thanks for the time. Uh, there should be some links on the side for some other related videos that you might find interesting for related topics.